Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today we are playing with some beads to make some pretty spine danglies for our spine jewelry. Um, some people call these boho beads or uh, paper beads, uh, but this is a great way to use up book pages. You don't need very many supplies other than maybe um, some book pages, maybe some kind of stiff pokey tool. Um, you can use a screwdriver or a thin knitting needle. Uh, this is a, an ice pick that I'm using and uh, just something to wrap the paper around. And uh, it's very easy. You don't need any central core other than the paper itself. You don't need a straw. You don't need anything like that. Um, and maybe just some extra beads to play with. Maybe you've got some broken jewelry around. I have a whole bunch of broken jewelry that um, I'm uh, grasping from today. And uh, so let me show you the prototypes. Um, this is a uh, Prototype number one. I'm, I'm on extra zoom here so I can see and I can show you the small stuff. So this is just used with a, a little uh, pearl, uh, a little piece of crafting wire. You can get crafting wire from the crafting stores or you can even get wire from uh, the hardware stores, Home Depots and Lowe's and things like that, Ace Hardware. Um, so it's easy. It should be easy to source. You can buy it online everywhere and I will try and put some um, links in my Amazon shop as well in case you're having trouble finding them. But um, you can get it in all sorts of different colors too. Very fun. And um, here's another one a little fancier. I went a little longer with this one using some more different uh, beads and some little uh, seed beads and things like that. Pearls and some glass beads. Very fun and use the uh, wire to wrap around the paper little bit of inking going on. Here's just some different styles. This one I believe I actually did use a straw with, but we're just going to make the simple paper ones and you can make use the simple paper core as your straw if you don't have a straw to make other ones like this. So I'll try and show that as well today too. So let's get to it. I have to remember that I'm zoomed very close here so I'd... hang on. Yeah, I, I think it's okay. Yeah, let me back up just a little bit. Okay. All right, so let's do this. All right, so what I did was I took, I took a book page, okay? And uh, this book page, um, doesn't really matter what size the book page is, but what I did was I cut out some text from the book page, and this is approximately two inches by about five, five and a half inches. It doesn't have to be exact, you just need to know how wide you want your bead. And this width will make approximately, whoa, beads everywhere, um, this width of, of, of a bead. Okay, so come, you know, here or there, a few, a few little millimeters. Um, so I just cut up a bunch of these. And it's a very simple process if you've never done this before. And I'm going to be using art glitter glue to close it because of this, uh, <laughs> look, it's burbling all over on me. Uh, the thin metal tip makes it very easy to apply the glue. But let me get my little, my little, uh, this is my ice pick I'm using. Like I said, you can use a screwdriver. You can use a skewer. Uh, you want something thinner than a pen. Hi, Holly. And you want something um, uniform in thickness that will make your bead roll nicer. And um, I haven't done this in a while and I'm just out of beads. So I thought, um, or getting really close to it. But you want to uh, you want to think about it being snug and straight. And uh, then you just you just start rolling. It's pretty easy. You can buy some fancier things to do this with, but I don't really think it's necessary. I think it's pretty easy to roll the bead. If it goes a little cockeyed, sometimes that happens too. Um, you can just unroll it a bit and go again, or you can just enjoy the uh, random, like this one went a little bit uh, off the edge, but I decided to leave it. Just leave it and roll with it. And uh, when you get close to the edge, um, let's see if any of that glue is still wet. Nope, it's all dry. <laughs> okay, so you just take your glue and just a very tiny little drip there. Oh, let me stay in frame. I got a small frame today. Okay. Did I put it all the way under there? Make sure you get the glue right to the edge so it doesn't peel up. And this glue grabs pretty fast, which is nice. Okay, so there's all grab, slides right off, and you got your base of your bead. Now I went ahead and uh, inked the edges in brown on these, and I will do that again just so you can see that exact one. I used. Um, doo -doo -doo. Here we go. Walnut stain. Yeah, walnut stain. Because it was there. But you could use any color. And I know these end up looking like cigarettes, but they're not cigarettes <laughs> of any kind. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they are just um, 
uh, just giving some attention to that uh, end. And you could even put a little along the uh, where the last glue line is too. I think that's where it was. I can't even see it now. It's gone. Uh, but it's interesting because you get to see little tiny writing on it, which is sort of cool. Since we are working and making books, you have uh, left the mystique of writing. And um, so I'm just taking some, it looks apparently I'm working with 20 gauge wire. This is artistic wire. And um, I'm just going to cut a piece, maybe 10 inches long is a good uh, piece to work with. And there we go. And if you have uh, jewelry tools, it does make it much easier. And you can usually get a set for not too much money with your basic pliers and your round nose pliers. See, these have these are round. And that's helpful to make the ends. If you've never done that before, it's very easy. Yeah, I hope this is focused. Actually, let me zoom in so you can see this. Sorry for the dirty hands I've been inking. Um, but you, you grab it and then you just start rolling and that'll start coiling it. See that? And that takes care of that little pokey edge. So once you get about three coils going, then you're pretty good and you just want to come back on yourself. To straighten it out a little bit. Okay. Show you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, straighten out your wire just a wee bit. Maybe I'm too close here. Let me back out just a little bit. Okay. And uh, then we're going to start threading. So the basic one, this is the basic one. Okay. This just has a little uh, pearl on either end. And I have a little pearl I'm going to put here down at the end. And then I'm going to put my bead on, my paper bead, down at the end. And uh, then I'm going to put another little pearl. Oops, lost my pearl. These things go shooting off into the dark and they're gone. Okay, here we go. And it's on. We'll follow it. We'll follow it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so oh, I got to close my glue. It's oozing again on me. Okay, because I'm getting close to the bottom. Okay, straighten it out. Make everybody look good, right? And uh, now we're going to close it off at the top. So the way I, there's a lot of ways to do that, but the way I, oh, look, I've got some magnets sticking on here. Um, okay. This is how you do it. All right, let me zoom in so you can see this. Okay, you have your round nose pliers. They're very tiny. You grab a hold. Um, you're a little bit nor, uh, like a head above the bead and you bend a 90 degree angle and then you wrap this around. Okay, and can straighten it. You can turn this a little bit so it it's easier to grab. And you start twisting. Oops. And you see, twisting. And that's going to lock that upper loop in. When you go around a few times, just straighten out your loop so it's at the top. All nicey nice. Okay. And now, with this extra tail, okay, I'm going to back out so you can see again. Oh, no, I think you can see there. Um, oh, no, go back out a little bit. Okay. So. Um, wrap and you just kind of wrap it around the body of the bead and then as you get close to the bottom you're going to wrap around the neck. Now you have a couple choices here. You can keep wrapping until you're almost done but if you uh, want to nip it off at any point you want to get these are handy a little pair of these flush nippers and uh, these get in really close. Yeah it gets it nice and close. Nip and then once you've nipped then you come in here with the pliers and you just give it a little uh, encouraging squeeze to go inside because you don't want that little pokey bit poking anybody. So any little ends you see sticking out, you just squash them in. And there you go. You have it. So then you have one that looks like that and one looks like that. Oh, geez, I went to town. I made, I made a bunch of them. And they're very, very fun. A great way to use up book pages and you don't need any central core. Um, so let's make a little more, a little fancier one. Okay, so I'm going to, I think I'm going to still work with about 10 inches. It seems to be plenty. Um, you can maybe do 11 inches if we're going to make it a little bit longer this time. And uh, this time I'm going to do something along the lines of this design, which has, just has basically a few more beads. I added some seed beads and a glass bead. Uh, and just made it a little bit longer. And there's really no limit to the length. You could do these super long. That might be kind of cool too. Huh, I never thought about that. Maybe we have to try one of those. Um, see how that comes out. Okay, here we go.
I'm just making the, the curly Q top, grabbing it. Oh, let me zoom in for you again. Doom. Okay, see? I just I just grabbed it and I started hold it where it is. Oops, sorry. Hold it where it is and then turn right there. Yeah. You don't have, there's nothing forced. It just happens. The co coil happens. Yeah. And once you start seeing 3, you're pretty much done. Okay? Then you just want to fold it back a little bit on itself to give it a neck. So you have a neck. Okay? See the neck? Okay. And then uh, you go to the other end. Now we're going to thread. Let me back up. Boop. Okay. Uh, so following, where's my, my prototype? Prototype. There you are. Okay. Uh, following this one. Oh, I have to put this so the words are the right way. There we go. Uh, and I used a seed bead. So um, let me just grab a couple. Ooh. No, don't empty it all there. Okay. Seed bead. Where did you go? Oh, yeah. Here you are. One. So I need four of those. Let me pull them out. Two, three, four. Okay. Well, yeah, it was kind of a, a sad excuse of one. Sometimes they come out different shapes. All right. So I put one on. And then I've got some glass beads from some uh, broken necklace. One of these. Okay. I'm going to put that on. Okay. So I have this so far. Okay. Then I have another seed bead following the pattern. Okay, then I need another pearl. Grab a pearl from the pearl bucket. Oh, okay, there's one. All right, and then that's it. So now we just need our uh, core. So let's do our core. Core is going in. And uh, now we're going to do the same thing, but reverse coming off the other end. So it's going to be pearl first. Going on. And these are very easy to thread on the wire. The wires got enough stiffness, makes it kind of fun to work with. Then a seed bead. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my little glass bead, just for fun. Any beads will work as long as I go over your wire. And the wire does not have to be super thick for this. You could use thinner wire than this too, but uh, this gives it just a little bit of sturdiness if you if you if it's going to be you know bedangled a little bit. Uh, and the last seed bead. Yep. Come on, Pam. You can thread it. Yay. Okay. Uh, so we are done with the basic construction and now we're just going to finish off the top loop. And uh, this is a lot of fun. Okay. So what we do, yeah, I'm going to show you. Going to zoom in. I hope it's a good zoom for you. Um, okay. So uh, just a little bit north of the bead, not far, maybe, maybe a quarter of an inch. So you can do that 90 degree turn. And then you come around. Whoop. Drop the bead and you can straighten it out like that. Now you grab this little guy and you start winding. Windy, windy, wind. Windy, wind. Round and round we go. Yep. And it kind of tightens everything up as you're doing it. Once you get around a few times, you want to straighten the little head out a little bit. Okay. The little head is at the top. That wasn't the best windy wind that I've ever done. Um, yeah, maybe make the neck a little smaller. Um, okay, so you just come down and do the same thing all the way down. It really doesn't matter where you end up here as long as it's in a happy place for you. So there. Now this one is pretty much short enough to, to stay where it is. So I'm just going to give it the squeeze, to put it in place so it's not going to be bothering anybody. Making sure all little sharp ends are tucked in and squashed in. Okay. And there we go. We have it all set. How cute is that, right? Nope, we put the writing. Nope, the writing's the right way this way. There we go. And that looks a lot like his uh, big brother who happens to be littler, but that's okay. So now we have a couple uh, more and these are just so much fun to make. They're very easy, but let me show you how to make one using the uh, book page as your core if you don't have um, any straws or anything like that to wrap around. Okay. So we're going to take yet again, one of these lovely papers. Okay. Let me back up a little bit. And uh, here is my very fancy, very expensive ice pick. Pretty sure I got that at a garage sale somewhere. Yeah. That looks like a garage sale find. 
You know how you kind of, I mean, I really wasn't, I didn't even buy it because it was a nice, I didn't even know it was a nice pick when I bought it. I thought it was just a, I thought it was an all, but uh, apparently it's not. It's an ice pick. So I, I have learned something. Yes. But I never intended to pick ice with it. So that's what I'm saying. Um, okay. This one's going to be a little cockeyed. I can get him to go down a little bit or not. We won't fight with him. Um, and you can pull it off to glue it. It doesn't have to be on there. I have some oo- glue ooze here. Maybe I can use this up. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. And it's good if it covers the ends because then you know it's going to be really sealed. And that and that um, art glitter glue grabs really fast for a wet white glue, which is really handy when you're in the depths of things. Now, I don't need to um, ink it because I'm going to cover this with some material. And let me see what I can find that is close by. Oh, here's something. A random something. Um, okay, let me grab that. That looks fun. So this I had from working on some journals recently and it's just some material and uh, let's say it's not really the right width. It's I guess if I open it up, it is better, but I'm going to actually cut it into a strip and wrap it around strip like and see how that goes. Now these you can do all sorts of different ways and uh, can be a lot of fun. Oh, you're not going to play, are you? Yeah, this is an um, a nylon, not a nylon, but like a polyester bamboo sort of sheet. And uh, they're not as fun to tear as the cotton ones. <laughs> uh, got it. <laughs> but it can be done apparently. Okay. So uh, yeah, this one I think is going to be pretty good. All right. Let me just put a little, no, you know what? Let me switch to Fabrifix here because I'm going to glue fabric and I want a good hold. And it's gonna oh, it's gonna come out fast on me so let me just get that covered okay there now let me just run that around there a bit and uh, probably wouldn't hurt to put a little glue down the side and just to get ourselves started okay and we're started get it kind of tight to beginning and then you can go on an angle so you can get some distance covered yeah so there we go we've made it to the bottom and we can cut this off and let's get a little more fabrifix this is fabrifix clear silicone glue glues fabric to fabric fabric to paper paper to paper um very good glue oh, probably put way too much there okay um the thing is it comes out in a big blob so that is sort of something you gotta deal with but yeah see if i can get there Sort of saved the day there. Oh, am I in shot? Nope. Uh, let me glue it back together. Okay, let me just cut that little, little tail off. Okay, so now we have a fabric tube. Can you see the tube? Yep, we have a tube. <laughs> and uh, so that means that we can go inside and do stuff with that. But maybe, maybe we want to wrap some more things around it because we're we're having fun now. This one, I wrapped some uh, silver metal thread around it. And this one, what did I do? Oh, I I grabbed some cheesecloth and did some crazy things on that one. So let's see what I have in arm's reach. Arm's reach, I have some of this stuff. This was, I was working with some uh, bedding the other day, yesterday actually. And uh, here, let's see what happens if I sort of glue this around. Will that look cool or weird? It's just threading from where I was tearing the bedding. Uh, Let's see, I could wrap it. Oh, that would look kind of cool. Yeah, that kind of gives it a neat look. All right, so we can work with that. All right, so that'll be the plan in theory. And now we have to glue it. So let's get that little glue back in place. And this little thing is going to come out fast on me. So I'm going to put a top there and I put a top there. And I'm going to recap it. Whoop, before I lose too much. Okay, and let me just run that around, run that around. Okay, now we're committing a little here. Let me start at this end. Okay, you see what I'm doing? Okay, there we go. And we're wrapping and we're angling down. So we travel some distance. Let me zoom in so you can see. Okay, and we're angling and wrapping. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's got, it's got that sort of swaddled look, you know, the swaddled look. 
Okay, before my glue dries, I'm going to get there at the end and do the final little wrapperoo and hope it sticks. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do the massage, convincing it to stick. There. Okay, so this is what we have so far. So we just have a little baby uh, tube bead made out of book page fabric and um, bed sheet threads. How about that? Okay, so we have this and let's go ahead and um, put some wire in here. Let's do our about 10 inches again. Let me back up a bit so you can see. Okay. Okay, got a piece. Now, um, let's do this. Um, yeah, let's do our typical curl. One, just making the big curl. Let's do three coils. There's two, and there's the third coil coming around. We back it up on its neck. Okay, squeeze it together. We have that. And now we got to decide what we're going to decorate this with. Okay, so what do I got here? Let me see. Let me see. Oh, you're kind of pretty. What are you? Oh, you're kind of weird. What are you? No, that looks weird. All right. Let me go get, get some beads. Hang on. Okay. I have found some glass beads on a string and I bought these. I bought like, oh, let me show you just a little bit, like a whole pile of broken jewelry on eBay by the pound You can buy the stuff and I actually separated it into colors. So I have a, like a, a goldish pile, not real gold, a goldish pile and a, um, you know, a silver pile and a blue pile, a green pile, a pinkish red pile, that kind of stuff. So I think either these would look very cool or maybe even these might look kind of cool. Well, maybe I should put them like that. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Or maybe even just these two round dudes. They're, they're kind of pretty too. I like those. Um, but I, you know what? I'm going to go for the pinkies. Yeah, let's do that and see how that, how that pans out. Let's see what else I can find. And I'm digging. Okay. Maybe I'll... Oh, that's a weird one. If I can find it in 10 seconds or less, we'll do, we'll do it. But if not, I'm back. Okay. Found a couple of those. All right. We'll be fine. Maybe a couple of those. I don't know. Let's see. Whatever we got up here. All right. So I also found these. These are pretty, aren't they? And some glass beads. Yeah, some pinky glass beads. They're really pretty. Um, okay, so we're going to build from the bottom. So we got to think. All right, so I'm going to put a, a silver seed bead here. It's going to get one of those bigger ones, not one of those really super tinies. Um, and then I'm going to put a glass bead on. If you don't like it, you can always uh, reconstruct. There's no, nobody locks you into this stuff. You can undo it. It only takes two seconds. And put that one there. I don't know, because I just thought I would. Maybe I'll put this one here. It's a pretty one, eh? That's pretty. Um, and now we can put this here. And a butt against that one. Abutment is good. Okay, then we'll just reverse it. Okay. And black one. And then the purple one. And then the silvery seed bead. Okay. And then we're going to close it up. So this is what it looks like so far. That's kind of pretty, huh? Yeah. Okay, so um, and we'll do one more thing to this one. Just to give it a little more pizzazz. Let's see. Okay. Now we're going to bend 90 degrees. And then we're going to start to wrap. One, two. Usually three is good to get you started. Now, I don't think this is long enough to go all the way down. Let's see how far we can go. One. You know what? I don't think I'm going to make it all the way down. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to finish it up here. Yeah. And make it look like that's what I was planning to do the whole time. Because mm -hmm, I didn't cut my, my thing longer. So if you're making a longer bead, if you know that ahead of time, it's helpful. Because then you can plan where you want your wire to go. Um, okay, but let's say, hey, I would like a little more pizzazz on that. It still looks a little naked in the, in the middle zone. So let me put that down. Let me roll over and I'll get some gold of something. Something. How about this something? Here's a something. Oh, okay. This is a gold elastic. 
No, I think I want something fluffier. I feel like well, I want some, uh, oh, you know, that, uh, that other stuff, this. <laughs> eyelash trim. Yeah, yeah, I think we're ready for some eyelash trim on this guy. Um, let's just play with some and see what happens. Probably should have gone for a more dramatic color. Do I have a dramatic color? I don't have it out right now, though. But uh, that's okay. And uh, so what I think I'm going to do here is I have to do a little tie. I've got to tie it on. <laughs> got to tie one on here. Yep. All right. Yep. There. And these are fun and easy to make, you know, if you're just sitting around and um, just feel like doing something different, give yourself a little variety in life. And you can you can kind of wrap these together and sort of make them as one. So when you do your wrap as we're going to do now, wrapping, 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 it'll sort of hide itself. Okay, now I need to tie this. Okay, one little slip knot. And if I was a master seamstress, the next one I will do, I will, or my next trick, let me do this knot over. Apparently I can't do the first knot. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, trying first knot. And, uh, you know, it's not easy working with uh, eyelash trim, that's all I have to say, because there's eyelashes everywhere. Okay, now how to get the second one on? Maybe you have to go the other way and do a slip knot that way. And maybe now everything locks into place, right? Probably not. So I think I'm going to put a little glue there just to be sure because I don't think I'm tied. I think it's just slip knotted. Maybe I have to go the same way again. Hmm. Yeah, let me try that. Um, I still think I'm going to put glue there because I don't, I don't trust that knot. I have uh, not doubt. <laughs> Is there such a thing? I got it. I got not doubt here. Okay. Oops. Come on. Get through there. All right. Who, inv who, who invented this stuff? All right. Who? 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 <laughs> I want you to come forward. <laughs> come to the top of the class. We're going to have a little word. Okay. There we go. Am I, am I tied? I think I'm tied. I think I'm tied-ish. All right. We're just going to snip that off. And well, that's not tied. <laughs> I can see it's not tied. Who are we kidding? That's not tied. Um... No, geez, I think I have to cut it. All these things happen. Oh, life in the craft room as we know it. Yeah, that's how these things go. See, I should have done my prototype on this one first, but no, no, I said to myself, oh, you can wing this, Bam. You got this. Mm -hmm. Oh, see how that goes. Okay. Well, I'm about ready to give up on that. I think this is what I'm going to do. This is what you do when you don't know what to do. You, this is called the wrap the bejeebers movement. <laughs> Out of it. And then you come in with the Fabrifix and you say, please Fabrifix, do your stuff. Do that thing that I know you do so well. Oh, look at the, your little Fabrifix thing of glue around there. There we go. Look at that. I even glued the, <laughs> the thread to the Fabrifix bottle. Okay. I'm, I'm just running around there and that's going to glue that all in nice and I don't have to deal with it. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll re-fluff my fluffies everywhere else though. So I have some fluffies. Yeah, I want some fluffies. Yeah, so now I have a nice little bohemian style uh, bead, or maybe it looks like a caterpillar, or I don't know. Um, and I could put more, uh, maybe I'll put a, just a tiny bit of um, metal wire at that end too, to make it look complete. Don't want anybody thinking it's not complete, because yeah, I want it to be complete. Like they can see it through all this. <laughs> and if you don't know how to start, sometimes you can just start with one of those little circles one of the coils just start with a little coil and that'll give you a soft ending and um, you can just start wrapping right from there and uh, you can go around there come around here wrap one there you can even come up here and if you want to finish off at the top you can just come around the neck neckaroo and put a little put a little collar on everything and then you just want to squash that little sharp edge down down, <laughs> down, <laughs> and squash, and then everything should come to pass. Yeah, there we go. It looks like that was totally intentional, that little design there. Yeah, that little medallion that I made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's how it goes in the crafting room sometimes. So I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun with you guys. Here's just some different examples. 
Let me put these out here so you can see what we made. But uh, they're fun, they're quick, they're easy, and they're adaptable to different things. So you can make different styles of your uh, spine dangle beads. Uh, you can actually hang these from a pen or something like that. Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, you know, maybe somebody in their wise wisdom can figure out a way to hang the thread or the from the from the end of the glue bottle pen. Maybe there's a way to do that. I don't know. I'll have to think on that. <laughs> there probably is. Um, but uh, there you go, folks. I hope you had fun and enjoyed that. I know I always enjoy spending time with you. So thank you very much for hanging out with me today. I really want to let you guys know how appreciative I am for uh, um, all the kind words and um, uh, the kind reviews you guys are putting on the Etsy shop. Thank you so much. Um, that that uh, is, you know, t for you guys to take the time to do that out of your busy day and you're doing stuff. Um, uh, you know, thank you. We sincerely thank you. And uh, also, um, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share, and hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of every video that I put up. And uh, you can find a list of my uh, favorite tools and supplies down in my Amazon store link below. Um, just click on it, it's like one click, and you can see everything that I uh, use for from all my videos in there. And I'm uh, actively adding to it all the time, every time I make a video. So I will put some of the wire in there for you if you're having a hard time finding it. And um, uh, check out my digital kits. They're on Etsy as well. All sorts of different topics from mushrooms to uh, vintage ledger to all sorts of things. And uh, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, signed up for, sign up for the newsletter. It's a free monthly emailed newsletter that comes to you uh, once a month and you get via email and you get it, uh, you get a free digital image with that once a month. And then also included, you get the checklist of uh, junk journal supplies to keep your eyes open for around your house or around uh, where your world. And uh, also you get the note from the bookmaker, which is the note that I put in the front of every journal explaining what a junk journal is and how you might be able to use it, different fun ways to use it. Uh, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. And my podcasts on junk journal related topics, um, the paper outpost, the joy of junk journals, comes out on anchor.fm on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If you have Apple podcast or Google podcast or Spotify, um, or if you don't have any of those, you can just go to anchor.fm and the link is below as well. If you're looking for playlists, um, certain categories of videos that I have, I have journal construction videos, I have how-to videos, I have uh, flip-through videos, um, you know, in playlists, organized in playlists. So you can either go to my channel or go down below in the description box, they're listed there. And I've been also highlighting some of them at the ends of my videos. Come and find me on Instagram and Pinterest and Etsy and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook and come and join the Facebook group. It's a fun place to do weekly and monthly challenges and uh, do all sorts of fun things. You can ask questions. You're welcome to lurk. Uh, but it's a group of very fun, friendly, happy people who are uh, junk journal uh, lovers as well. And we would love to make things and uh, show off what we made and just have fun at it. So uh, come and join us if you haven't come over yet. And remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.